Good morning, Facebook. <laughs> I wanted to jump on this morning. Just while it's in my, in my awareness, I wanted to jump on and share something about men and men's sexual struggles because um, I was on Facebook last, on Instagram last night and my friend Juliet Allen, who's also a tantra teacher and sex coach, had put a post up about how there's a lot of stuff around about, about pussy power, you know, and woman um, and sexual empowerment and how, you know, there's all this, yeah, uh, uh, all this kind of teachings and stuff around women being really empowered in their sexuality. And there's not so much around, uh, stuff out there for men. And she was basically doing a shout out to men and, and um, that men too uh, struggle. And um, I was reading a lot of the comments on the post and a lot of the comments were from women saying, no, men don't struggle, men are sexually liberated, their sexuality is more acceptable, all this kind of stuff. And I, for a fact, know that this is not true because I deal with men's sexual struggles all the time. And actually, men are just as sexually suppressed, repressed, sexually shamed as women in different ways. And what Juliet was speaking to was um, honoring men's cocks, right? Honoring men's cocks and and some of the women on there had said, well, no, they don't, they don't have to worry about that. I'm like, well, actually, yeah, because a man often associates his worth uh, with his ability to perform, has insecurities about how big his penis is, if it's going to work, um, and if it you know, struggles with things like premature ejaculation, um, and all these kind of things that are real, like the struggle is real. Men are, go through these things, they just don't talk about it, because guess what? They feel ashamed to talk about it, right? They feel ashamed because so, so I actually can kind of get, I think when I tune into what goes on, because I work with women as well around, around their sexual empowerment and sexual healing. And I can understand where they come from because they just don't know that these men are struggling. And actually it really links into how they feel as a man in the world. And if things, if they're, a lot of men I see are so, being so emasculated and their shit don't work. Like this is the wording that they'll use with me is like, they'll be like, oh, well, my shit don't work. Like, can you help me? Right. And, and, and like, I, I just don't, I don't even want to date. I don't want to even approach women because I'm afraid that, that I'm not going to be able to perform properly, that I'm not going to be able to make her happy, that I'm not going to be able to make her an orgasm. I'm, I'm, you know, afraid to even put myself in, in that position. Right. So, yeah. And it was just really interesting noticing that, to notice that we, there is a lot of stuff out there for women's sexual empowerment and there's not a lot of speaking about that around men's sexual empowerment and the stuff that men go through. One of the things that I found really helpful is to really dropping into a man's world and I encourage all the women watching this to really drop into how it must feel as a man who's born into a world surrounded by porn who's not taught how to manage his arousal, his desire, his sexual energy, that is not taught about those things. And because um, our arousal and desire systems work quite differently, a man has to deal with getting hard-ons that he can't control as he steps into puberty and he has to try and hide those and, and doesn't know how to, how, to, how to deal with that and feels ashamed about it. And then um, is also men are taught not to feel their emotions or that it's not it's it's weak or it's not manly to feel it will be vulnerable or show show your upset so so what happens is how do they deal with that often what they'll do is they'll go and um they'll go and watch porn and they'll go numb themselves out they'll go masturbate because that's because often ejaculation is their emotional way of dealing with their stress dealing with their emotions and then they have to do that in secret and they have to hide they have to hide the porn they have to um, hide that they're doing these things and and then this can lead to things like porn addiction and masturbation addiction and then they feel ashamed about that and then they're not and the way that they have to, they have to keep numbing that shame as well because they're not allowing themselves to feel it because they're not actually taught how to manage their sexual energy their desire and and oh man and on top of that there's this whole thing with um not what a lot of men will want to um they'll hide their desire 
or their arousal because they don't want to appear like a sexual predator, right? So they'll shut it down because they don't know how to deal with that energy that's actually in them. Um, and then and then a lot of the things that if they're watching a lot of porn, it'll start with their with their brain, they'll start like subconsciously, like and then they'll then and I don't think we know how much men struggle. Like really, I only really like with one of my ex lovers, he really brought this to my attention how much he struggled with going out in the world and seeing attractive women and feeling like this 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 primal energy of wanting to have sex. And and um he showed me a video and it was like Basically, the video was about, it was like a comedian. He was talking about, this is not a choice, it's a punishment. It's like, it's like pretty much you have to keep, like, it's like it's not even a choice um, as well. So it's like, and I was like, and I put myself in that position. I was like, can you imagine what it's like to be walking out in the, as a man in a world and, and, and be seeing attractive woman and, and, and feeling that pull and then shaming yourself for it to be like, oh shit, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, I shouldn't look, don't look like, you know, because, it, and then shutting that energy down as well. And then feeling bad for actually feeling that way, for actually feeling desire, for actually like shaming that as well, um, which is really, really common. So one of the things that I do with this men is I give them permission to feel that desire, to feel that arousal to, and this is one of the big pieces and I, for the men watching, one of the things is to give your permission to be human and give your permission to feel your desire and arousal. And one of the pieces that I teach my clients is this breath, is using your breath to move that energy to when you start to feel that desire, is just bringing it up from your cock into your heart with your breath, okay? And to give yourself permission to feel what's there instead of kind of shaming or shutting yourself down. Because you're not taught about these things. And so this is when a lot of men, will, they'll, they'll go to, the urge is so strong, so strong, that they'll go, they will go to porn or they'll find some outlet or they'll go see an escort, go to a strip club um, and, and do these things because the urge is just so there. They've got, to, they've got to do something with it. Like Otherwise, they, almost to the point they can't function. Like, I don't know what to do with this energy. And the other thing is some men also then shut it down and shut their sexual energy and their desire down and then, and then don't have any, any um, libido as well. So that can go the other way. It can become kind of overactive or unhealthy um, or it can be go into this, this underactive, right? So whew. <laughs> I hope you guys resonated to some of that. I just felt like I had to, to jump on um, while it was in my space. Um, you know, doing this work with men has really helped me to have a lot of compassion and understanding of what men go through um, all the time and then the worst part of it is that as a woman in the past I have really shamed men oh this feels a bit like vulnerable about um for their sexual desire when men have expressed their desire or like you know looked at me <laughs> you know or even approached sometimes it's like I'd put this wall up and like this kind of like fuck off like with your sexual energy because I didn't and I didn't feel safe um, I didn't feel safe with men's sexual energy. And so I would shut them down, which would then they would internalize it more, right? And make themselves feel more, more ashamed um, and about, about that. And so I'd yeah, go and like kind of, because I didn't feel safe. And the reason that I didn't feel safe is because I'd been in the past allowing myself to be taken from because I wasn't in my body. And I didn't know how to say no. And because I had stories around, you know, having to please a man to be liked and, and giving my power away sexually um, to get validation and being disconnected. And so I ended up disconnected from my body and not all this kind of stuff, right? So, so then, so a lot of the time, women can be perpetuating this unconsciously um, because they don't feel safe. And so there's responsibility, I, I feel like, on both for both men and women to, to explore um, their, own, their own disempowerment around their sexuality. And for women, I feel like it's like, how can I make my, myself and my body feel safe? How can I come back into my body? How can I connect with myself? How can I learn to communicate what I want um, and speak my boundaries um, without going into the this wall of like fuck off energy that we put up that a lot of women put up so often um you know how can i make myself feel safe and express 
vulnerability because once you have healthy boundaries, then you can truly be vulnerable. Without healthy boundaries, it's very hard to be vulnerable. So that's the key, the boundaries piece there. Um, and then take the, that's where a lot of sexual healing, the sexual healing journey comes in. And for men, I think the responsibility is, is really around how can I learn to, to manage my sexual energy and, and feel my emotions. So, and I think this goes both, this goes for both really, but how can I learn and how can I, how can I learn to, and, and um, when it comes to a woman, like start to, once you do that, you can, you'll actually start to tune in more with when a woman, because a lot of women will say yes when actually their body's saying no. And a man who's really in tune, like has, with his sexual energy, with managing his sexual energy, um, will actually be able to, when he's really in tune with his cock and really feeling um, that, he will be able to tune in whether a woman's body is a yes or a no, right? So even when a woman's saying yes, her body might be saying no, um, if men, you know, men can actually learn how to tell with that. So yeah, so there's responsibility on both our parts when it comes to this. So my point here is, is that men are definitely not sexually liberated, like far from it. And we, none, the whole world is sexually suppressed. We are, you know, shamed. We are, we are shut down. Yeah, just there's, there's so much, the thing is there's so much power in our sexual energy. It's our life force. And my belief is that all the conditioning around sex being bad, wrong, dirty, naughty, this kind of thing is to suppress our sexual energy because if ultimately if we were all really tapped into our sexual energy, we would be extremely powerful and powerful manifestors um, and would bring us to new levels of joy and bliss. Instead of looking at needing joy and bliss on the outside of ourselves, we would be, would be really feeling it from within and having these amazing orgasmic states as well. But that's... I don't feel like that's the, the, the purpose because that becomes very goal oriented when we look at like sex and orgasm together. I think, you know, sex can be so many different things and it ultimately is an expression of who we are um, if we take the goal focus out of it. So, um, so yeah, that's all I really had to say. I mean, I actually could go on for a while, <laughs> but uh, just whatever wanted to come out today. So in saying that, you know, if there are people out there that, that, um, want to explore more of this stuff please feel free to reach out to me and we can have a chat you know a confidential chat I hold a really safe space um I find that uh, yeah a and this is the stuff I do like I talk about more at my workshops as well I've got one coming up this weekend um in a couple in, in a couple of months as well around men and sexuality teaching women um more about understanding their own sexuality but more so around men and their sexuality um which is great also for people, women that want to that work intimately with men and or, or want to. So, yeah, there's a lot there. I'm re I really feel like, you know, we as women have the ability to really actually hold space for men to, to open up and explore their sexuality and, and open their hearts. And um, I, be I believe that the way to a man's heart is through his cock, <laughs> really, um, because there's this, this, there is a connection there, and I'll speak to that more another another time, I think. Um, but I see it happen all the time through through like you know cock worship and things like this, where a man actually ends up can end up in a deep surrendered state, um, where he actually cracks his cracks his heart open to be able to feel again. So it's really beautiful. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll I'll talk about that another time. If you want me to talk about that another time, let me know. Um, yeah. All right. Well, guys, I'm going to get going. I hope you have a beautiful, amazing day. Um, yeah. And make sure that you're exploring sexuality with breath, with sound, with touch, with movement, um, letting go of the goal. And yeah, enjoy. Enjoy some bliss and <laughs> pleasure. Bye for now.